good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are glad to have you join us uh, today for this medical technology conclave presented by SkillLink and Andhra Pradesh MedTech Zone. Uh, today, we have uh, four distinguished speakers here with us. Uh, Dr. Jitendra Sharma is the Managing Director and Founding CEO of Andhra, Andhra Pradesh MedTech Zone, which is Asia's first medical devices manufacturing park, and it is based out of Vizag. Uh, he is the Founder and Executive Director of Kalam Institute of Health technology that serves as a medical technology policy institute to various departments and ministries of government of India, and also the chairman of Indian Biomedical Skill Council. So we also have uh, Ms. Veena Kohli with us. Uh, she's the CEO of Vanguard Diagnostics, Managing Director of Diagon Vanguard Diagnostics India, President of, uh, President of ADMI, which is the Association of Diagnostics Manufacturers of India, and Convener of IVD Subgroup at the Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, we have Mr. Rajiv Nath uh, with us today. Uh, he's the Managing Director of Hindustan Syringes and Medical Devices Limited. He's the pe President of All India Syringes and Needles Manufacturing Association, AISNMA. He's also the Founder and Forum Coordinator of Association of Indian Medical Device Industry, uh, which you might know as AMED. Uh, we have Dr. Amod Anand Kumar from Skilling. He's the Director of Curriculum and Applications at Skilling, where he's uh, driving the overall uh, is skill enhancement programs or skill link spanning electronics and electrical domains, including embedded systems and medtech. So in a few minutes, uh, we'll have uh, Dr. Amod introduce uh, skill link and our role in the engineering talent ecosystem. Mr. Rajiv Nath and Ms. Meena Kohli would tell us about the medtech and IVD scenarios in India and need for a comprehensive pro PG program in medical technology. Following that, Dr. Sharma will be telling us more about AMTZ and its role in capacity building. Uh, Dr. Amod will then, then take us through an overview of the executive PG program in medical technology that AMTZ and Skilling have launched in partnership and the careers in medical technology for the ever-growing engineering talent in India. While we go through what is going to be a very informative session, we request that you feel free to post your queries in the chat and the speakers will answer them during the Q&A session. Uh, Dr. Amod, you can take over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Josna, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, sharing the stage with uh, such eminent personalities and we look forward to having um, a valuable uh, discussion on these topics. Uh, so let me quickly start uh, you know, by introducing uh, Skilling to all of you. Uh, so uh, Skilling is an upskilling platform that's focused primarily on engineering R&D and product engineering services uh, segment. Uh, we're working very closely with you know, automotive and uh, we are increasing our presence in other areas such as you know, medical equipment, aviation, metal connector and so on. We primarily uh, focus on three areas. One on employability enhancements for students uh, as they're completing their uh, study in the college and then entering the workforce. Then we also work with companies to help upskilling incoming employees and also reskill existing employees so that they are able to meet the demands of today and tomorrow's you know, requirements in the industry. So uh, we are uh, a VC funded uh, startup. Uh, we are backed by Y Combinator and Iron Pillar. Uh, we have about you know, $20 million of funding, which has primarily been invested in creating high quality content in all these different areas. We have about 1,500 employees spanning six different cities with over 250 courses designed by industry experts available on the platform. Uh, 10,000 students have already uh, you know, uh, enrolled in our programs and, our, uh, and have either completed or ongoing various different employee enhancement programs uh, throughout this uh, period. And about 1,000 of those are actually learners who are working professionals looking to reskill themselves for the needs of today's industry. We are working with more than 100 companies to uh, leverage this platform for their hiring and upskilling needs. So uh, here is a, a brief overview of all the different areas that we are creating industry relevant content in. So uh, we've started with mechanical engineering where we've created um, highly practiced and industry oriented uh, material designed around you know, automotive design, hybrid electric vehicles, computational fluid design, and so on and so forth. Um, we also have material in electrical and electronics focusing on you know, uh, various types of electrification technologies but we've expanded much beyond that into civil and computer science. And we're very proud to also talk about the medical equipment uh, technology that we've you know, expanded into uh, in collaboration with the MTZ. You'll be hearing a lot more about that course uh, later in this session. 
So uh, now I would like to in, uh, invite uh, Mr. Rajiv Nath to talk about the metrics scenario in India and the need for the program, followed by Ms. Veena Kohli and Dr. Jitendra Mishra. Thank you, Dr. Anand Kumar, for the introductory uh, remarks and about a broad overview. Uh, thank you, MTZ, for organizing this and inviting us. It's a subject very close to my heart. I will just share a short presentation with you. So medical device, I think, is the next big career story for all of us over here. After IT and pharma, uh, we've seen uh, tremendous growth in, the, uh, in India, in both the segments, uh, in India and internationally. And uh, India is, I would say, a global leader in these two segments over here now. And also we've seen the success in automotive industry. And now the new industry coming up is mobile phone and the consumer electronic industry. So these are the four industries which are, I would say, leading the race. And the next big story can definitely be medical devices. So many of you who are looking at uh, medical devices may not be fully be uh, clear about uh, the whole gamut. Uh, just briefly, I made this the assertion of the Indian medical device industry. Uh, we are a national body. We uh, are taking the interest of uh, nearly 1,200 to 1,500 manufacturers in the country. And have got a membership of more than 400 manufacturers. Uh, who are primary members and also more than 200 associate members uh, and we also host uh, other platforms like uh, Odemet for user development uh, interface and also for regulatory issues we have uh, IMD RRG. India is highly, heavily import dependent 80 percent of India's medical devices are uh, mainly coming from imports and uh, you can categorize them into disposables and consumables and you can also have the larger segment, which is electronics and equipments, or you can have uh, implants, IVD reagents, and surgical instruments. So these are the broad categories, and under each of the categories, you'll have different kind of products. So consumables can be a simple thing like a, a surgical suture, or it can be a spectacle. Uh, disposables can be like syringes or needles, or IV cannulas, or IV sets uh, used for drug inf infusion, for example. Electronics can be large electronics like MRI or CT scan machines, or it can be small electronics like a thermometer or an oximeter, or it can be a mid-sized equipment like an ultrasound scanning machine, or it can also be a standalone software or a wearable software app. So all that will come under the electronics and equipment category, and also you can have also electricals coming under that, which are motor-based equipments, for example. Uh, motorized beds, for example, or ICU beds. And then you've got the category of implants. Implants can be eye implants like intraocular implants, or it can be uh, uh, orthopedic implants like for knees and for uh, uh, shoulder implants, or for trauma surgery, uh, plates and screws. Or you could also have uh, uh, implants for cardiac care like stents on catheters or heart valves. And again, in COVID times now, most of you who are new to medical devices must be familiar with uh, uh, IVD reagents. IVD stands for in vitro diagnostics. So you've got familiar with the terms like RT-PCR testing, uh, rapid testing, that all comes under this category. And you can have tests uh, which can be point of care tests like uh, pregnancy testing. And then you've got surgical instruments. Surgical instruments can be non sterile surgical instruments like you've got the category of uh, uh, dentists using forceps, uh, for example, or tooth extractors, or you could have something more sophisticated like a endoscope or a, a laparoscope. Then in the case of exports, uh, India is doing quite well. Uh, last year's exports crossed $2.6 billion, 20,000 crore rupees. Exports are growing at a pace which is higher than the pace of imports. And this is quite interesting. Uh, most of us manufacturers in medical devices uh, we find it very difficult to crack the Indian market because Indian doctors are very brand loyal and don't switch brands easily. But it's easier after uh, crossing a threshold of quality uh, to enter the international market who is not having a, a negative bias. And then it's more easy to grow in a more profitable international market for exports. Uh, these are the imports coming in. You can see that they have been stabilizing except for China in the last uh, one year's time. The green is the China shooting up uh, last year because of COVID consumables coming in. And from other countries uh, like USA, Germany, Singapore, it has been slowing down, in fact, because of the uh, 
again the covid impact and the make in india story coming in from india these are the exports graph you can see year on year there has been a steady growth uh, uh, healthy growth from india and we can see more of this is going to be coming in so in the various categories of medical devices you've got uh, out of the 1200 odd manufacturers you've got certain uh, key brand leaders in each of these categories uh, you've got hmd uh, my company making a dispo van that is disposable syringes uh, and other medical uh, drug delivery items uh, medical electrodes uh, is very strong in making a, it's a 250 crore rupee company making uh, electrodes for the ecg uh, kanam Letics is the largest manufacturer in india to make surgical gloves there are around 30 manufacturers making surgical gloves and around five manufacturers making nitrile gloves uh, G surgery wear is very strong in the uh, disposables category for OT. Uh, you have uh, drapes and gowns and specialized uh, kits to be made uh, and shunts. Surgery very strong in that. MRK is the second largest manufacturer in India for gloves. In the consumables categories, things like uh, IV sets, you've got catheters of various kinds, uh, you've got OT disposables, uh, hospital care disposables. For that, Romson's and Polymedicure have got a healthy position over there. Healthium is a fast growing company which is growing by uh, based on venture capital funding coming in and private equity funding. They're buying out Indian companies. So they're large in the uh, suture space and in the uh, space of uh, uh, consumables over there. BL Life Sciences is very strong in the area of uh, kits uh, for uh, uh, cardiac care. Tyner Orthotics is a company based in Mohali, Chandigarh area, which is very strong in rehabilitation equipment and orthopedic uh, support systems. In electronics, uh, we've got uh, India's two largest companies uh, over there. So you've got uh, Trivitron uh, and Elengers. Elengers is the market leader for X-ray machines. Uh, Trivitron is and BPL and Scandry are diversified electronic companies. Scandry was very much in the news uh, for ventilators. Then you got IATPL, who is very strong in the area of uh, OT uh, uh, theater uh, equipment, uh, which is used for uh, things like uh, putting a stent uh, and an implant over there, imaging equipment over there. Then you got Schiller, which is a Swiss company with a subsidiary in uh, China, in uh, Chennai, which is making uh, uh, cardiac care uh, equipment over there. In Midmark uh, is a company from France, uh, uh, which out bought out an Indian company called uh, 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 Denmark in uh, uh, Bombay. Oh, they are very in hospital. Janak Surgicals. Janak Surgicals, sorry. Janak Surgical. They are very strong in the area of uh, hospital beds. Uh, Remy is very strong in the area of uh, blood transfusion and blood storage products. Uh, Panacea is a very young, uh, fast moving company, very strong in the area of oncology. Uh, they make very specialized, expensive equipment, uh, uh, which are all import substitute, uh, uh, high capital cost equipment in the area of oncology, uh, linear accelerators, for example. Uh, Shivani and Phoenix are in the area of baby incubators. And then in the area of implants, uh, in cardiac implants, you've got uh, companies like SMT and Merrill, which are now challenging the big boys internationally. Uh, not only they, are, they have become the largest in India, but also they are uh, going to be challenging the uh, top five slots uh, worldwide, uh, so you can watch that space closely. In uh, intraocular lens uh, in Chennai area and Pondicherry area, area you've got Upper Swami and Aurolab. Uh, and then in the uh, knee implant and uh, the orthopedic implants, you've got Biorat, Medi Systems, and Pitkar in the uh, Pune, Mumbai building. In diagnostics, uh, we have got uh, Transasia and Trivitron, which make both reagents and equipments. Uh, also, Merrill and Agape is very strong in the equipment category, and Mitra Industries is again strong in the reagents as well as in the equipment category. In surgical instrumentation, you got ASCO uh, in Delhi area, you got uh, Allen Electronics, which is making uh, uh, cautery machines in Bombay. Uh, my company HMD is strong in the surgical blade segment worldwide. And then you got Quality Needles, which is the world's largest manufacturer to make suture needles in Noida. Then you've got endomet technologies who's making endoscopes so you can see these are just a, a tip of the iceberg uh, some of the leading companies who are not doing good only in, in india but internationally and they can be anything from 25 crore rupees to uh, 1000 plus crore rupee companies so you know 25 crore rupee company uh, 
can be a niche player so he can still be commanding respect internationally even though but turnover it may not sound much so covid has been a silver lining for the medical device industry you can see the sky blue the limited number of manufacturers which were there prior to covid there were hardly uh, 1200 uh, manufacturers and now post covid there are more than 800 companies making medical devices the dark blue is the new internet space so in the last few years, uh, you may have been hearing in the news, uh, government has been taking many steps for Make in India. And there have been many initiatives by individual organizations as well as by the government of India, uh, sometimes in coordination, sometimes on their own initiative. Uh, so Andhra Medtech Zone helped to create uh, uh, with the Prime Minister, uh, scientific uh, advisor to the PM uh, is the chief patron. Uh, jointly, they created the Kalam Institute of Healthcare Technologies for uh, commercializing indigenous technologies. Uh, this is the National Institute located at Vishakhapatnam. Uh, the Department of Biotechnology and DSG have played a steady role and uh, more of them have been coming in the news uh, recently in COVID times. They helped to establish organizations like the Bio Valley and Medi Valley in Andhra Medtech Zone, the IKP Knowledge Park in uh, uh, Hyderabad and then in Bangalore. You got C Camp in Bangalore and Venture Center in Pune. And these organizations uh, develop entrepreneurs and startups and make sure that they succeed. Uh, the Quality Council of India introduced the Indian certification for medical devices to allow manufacturers to have credibility so that they could be recognized uh, as being uh, uh, different and better than the peers. And the government of India, like you have the drug rules, so they also introduced the medical uh, device rules to ensure patient safety uh, in 2017. So this is a, a, a rule book which is in transition and by October 2023 next year, all medical devices will be coming under the licensing and regulatory regime. Then in the case of uh, uh, medicines, you have some products which are called scheduled drugs and the government uh, controls the price of them. Similarly for medical devices, government controls the price of certain medical devices like they did for stents and knee implants and uh, oxygen concentrators, for example. And uh, this kind of uh, price controls in the past on stents and knee implants have helped to establish the market share for Indian companies uh, and make them grow in India and also help the consumers. So it had a twin advantage. Uh, medical device parks have been established uh, at the behest of the state governments of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana in Vishakhapatnam and Hyderabad. And uh, four more are coming up by next year. Uh, two have already launched in Madhya Pradesh and in Himachal Pradesh, uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Goa, and uh, Noida UP is also be, going to be coming up. Then we have got uh, more interest coming in from uh, Haryana, uh, Gujarat, uh, from Maharashtra in Aurangabad, and uh, uh, Nagpur, as well as uh, in Bangalore, and uh, Odisha and uh, Guwahati and Jodhpur in Rajasthan. So we expect that around 10 to 15 medical device parks will be established in the next five years time all over the country. Uh, the AMTZ along with IMED and Quality Council of India also established the Indian Bio Biomedical Skill Development Council. Uh, this is to make sure that competency mapping and certification could be made available to biomedical technicians and engineers uh, so that they could uh, help in maintenance, upkeep, and installation and commissioning of uh, electronic uh, medical electronic equipment in India and outside of India. And the government uh, recently have launched uh, the MedTech Park Scheme and the uh, production-linked incentive scheme. So all this is making uh, sure that the making story is going to unveil, and this will bring in investments into India. So what we see are very exciting times. Uh, we can notice that uh, the current market size is, say, $15 billion. And that's about a, a $10 billion investment opportunity. What we are targeting from IMED is we are reaching out to various companies internationally and uh, inviting them to India from Korea, from Taiwan, because typically medical devices are made by MSME companies all over the world. So it is MSME to MSME reach out uh, for having technical collaborations. Sometimes a small Japanese or a Korean company may not be wanting to put a factory in India, but they don't mind sharing their technology in India and they can earn royalty from that. 
So as Indian companies, you can reach out to these foreign players and then you can seek to be a collaborator with them, pay them their royalty fees on a collaboration and they help you to make the product which you can market and sell it your own price point and make your own profits in India and export worldwide and share the profits with them. Or you can invite them to have a joint venture whereby they will also put in money into the venture and be a financial partner. And that is the second option available. The third option is to have a 100% FDI from the large players like the MNC companies. So we are targeting around 50 of these companies to come in with $40 billion investment each uh, to bring in $2 billion investments and $10 million uh, by, for a joint venture, which is about 50 crore rupees, 75 crore rupees size. And typically a collaboration will be around uh, 25 crore rupee investment size. So what are the career opportunities if you're looking at medical devices? Some of you who are joining this program today to understand uh, what what's the potential is, uh, you may be already be employed in a medical device company or you may be thinking of joining one. So typically there are various aspects to involving yourself in a career pathway. One is to of course gather the skills and then to get industry experience and then to attain techno-commercial knowledge. Now this techno-commercial knowledge in medical devices is quite varied. Since you've seen that we got so many different kinds of medical devices and different technologies, which can be rubber based, plastic based, chemical based, steel based. Uh, so there are various material sciences involved and various curriculum involved. You can be a, an engineer from the mechanical side, chemical engineering side, nuclear science. It doesn't make a difference. You can find your own niche over there. But if you're an engineer, then you need to have also idea about the body and about the some part idea about the uh, human anatomy, because your product is going to be used on a human being. So some amount of medical knowledge is required over there. And some amount of regulatory knowledge is required over there. And some amount of commercial knowledge is required over there. Similarly, if you're coming from a commerce background or an MBA background, and you want to come into this field, you need to get some technical ideas and get some technology ideas that even if you are not an engineer, or a scientist, you can always hire an engineer or a scientist to work under you. So you need to have technical knowledge and regulatory knowledge. And if you're a doctor who wants to develop a medical device and then put his own factory or a surgeon establish his own factory, then you also need to also have a commercial knowledge and a technical uh, exposure over there. So while you may not be needing to be expert in every area, you may be jack of all trades and maybe only master in one area, but at least you should know the terminology and have an exposure to the what is available in the menu card. So even if you hire an engineer or a scientist or a CA, you know what work output you have to expect from him. And then you have to develop the competency. So competence development is a combination of knowledge, of skill, of attitude and experience and all that comes into competence. And all that would what we seek in our industry, for example, in medical device industry, me as a company owner, are industry ready entrepreneurs. Now, you may think that why I need an entrepreneur. So even large organizations need entrepreneurs because product development, product expansion, putting up new factories, require plant heads, require entrepreneurs who will be doing business development, who will be doing product development, and helping the company to make more products or to add to the basket of products, which can be made and sold in a profitable manner. So we need people and we don't have time for that. So my competence I may have developed since I joined the factory when I was 22 years old and now I'm 59 years old. But I would like to see that compressed maybe in a youngster who joins my company in three to five years time. So how do we get this industry ready entrepreneurs? We can hire engineers, we can hire doctors, we can hire commercial uh, specialists like a accountant or chartered accountant. But how do we get somebody who will help us to make these kind of products and expand the business fast? And this was a need which was being felt and being discussed. And now, thankfully, Andhra MedTech Zone, along with this uh, uh, institute, is now coming forward with a master's program, which we'll be hearing about, and we'll be trying to address this issue over there. So watch this space and watch this area of growth 
which is unfolding and get ready to join in. It's going to be a very fortunate thing because what we are seeking is not only theoretical knowledge, but practical knowledge. So what we expect from this course is a combination of theoretical knowledge, skill development, as well as industrial experience over there. And we'll hear from the experts what they have in store for us. That's all from my side. Thank you and join us in making the medical devices in India and helping India to become Atman Nirmal. Thank you. If you want to reach out to us, you can contact me at this email ID. Thank you.